Hello, everybody. I was way, you know, I had five minutes to go, and so I was kind of dinking around on my phone, and then I realized it was 10. <laughs> I'm not usually a minute late. How weird. Happy Thursday. I realized I need to start sending reminder, posting reminders about my de de demos since they're not daily anymore. I'll try to remember to do that. I've been a little scatterbrained lately. A little bit scatterbrained. Hey, so tell me how everyone is doing. What's new? What's new? Thank you so much for being here. Hi. Okay, so some of you who are my Facebook friend saw my sourdough bread. Oh my gosh, it turned out so good. I just have to say, the, the, I, I bought this starter from Breadtopia and then I you know, fed it and followed the, followed the rules, followed the directions. And then I made the King Arthur flour no need sourdough bread. So you, hey Michelle. So anyway, the bread is amazing. Michelle is the owner, Michelle McCosh is the owner of today's Spotlight Store, which is Everything Scrapbook and Stamps. And it is a store in Lake Worth, Florida, around that area, right, Michelle? And Michelle is a dear, dear friend. I have taught there many times. Michelle is also the host of many cruises that she teaches on. Michelle is an excellent teacher. So I believe, Michelle, you've been doing your own Facebook classes and online classes and stuff like that. So make sure you talk about those. Um, Michelle is, has owned a store for a long time. So Michelle, please pipe up and talk about ordering, what you have in stock, what, what people can order from you, what you have in stock, um, all your details, your socials, your upcoming events, promote your classes. Anyway, but Michelle also hosts um, Back to Back with me and Diane. She, we've been doing that for a number of years. And so the original Back to Back is hosted by Michelle McCosh from Everything Scrapbook and Stamps. So Michelle, Michelle, please pimp your stuff, girlfriend. Um, Please support our stores, all of our stores out there trying to survive. I know you guys are doing that, which I appreciate a lot. Happy to have all of you guys with me. But anyway, back to my carbs. <laughs> the bread was so, so, so good. Seriously, like, delicious. Delicious, delicious. So make sure you guys are following comments. Turn your comments on so you can see Michelle's links. And um, she's, she's awesome. Michelle is the best. Dear friend. Thank you, Michelle. I hope we have back-to-back, -to -back too. <laughs> I'm really hoping we do. Back-to-back -back is fun. I mean, it, it, things get a little goofy. Diane loves to say, Diane Reebley loves to say, the difference between me and her is that I hide my weird. Hi, Heidi. She says, I discovered you following you through Tim Holt, for following Tim Holtz. Oh, cool. Maybe need the 101 class on how to start a journal. You know what, Heidi? If you, you can buy that class, but here's the thing. That class I wrote in 2007, so it's really, really old. I wouldn't buy it if I were you. Um, what I would do is just go back and go to Artadina Wakely Facebook page and then click on the videos tab and go ahead and just watch I don't, you'll just watch all the free demos that I've been doing. Um, I, I would recommend that more than um, Art Journal 101 because it's just really, really different. Uh, we've, t we've talked about doing, we might need to do an online back-to-back. -back. <laughs> uh, we might need to. The gloss sprays are awesome. Caroline asks if it's hard to keep up the feeding of the sourdough starter. It's not. You just feed a flour and water, and um, it's really quite active, actually. So right now, my starter's in the fridge to slow it down a little bit. But when I want to make another loaf, I have to kind of warm that starter up and feed it again and get it going again. So it's really not difficult at all. Okay, 
So let's talk a little bit about art cannibalism. I decided this would be a topic so that you can, uh, anyway, just to give you some inspiration and to, to talk you through my process. And I, hopefully it makes sense. Um, so I have prepped some focal point images. I've got a, bu a bunch of piles of crap over here to my right. Also, everything that I do today, if you have any of the collage collectives, you know, you might not want to rip up journals, which I, you know, I get it. Um, but if you have a collage collective, this is, this is going to be your, what you cannibalize. Okay. So this is, you know, one of my working ones, meaning you can see I've cut leaves out of that piece at one point. Tags. Okay. Um, and random bits because I just throw them right back in you know you know me I don't have good storage or organization but that is super easy to cannibalize so you know just if you if you're not going to rip up journals keep in mind that whatever collage paper you have scrapbook paper collage collectives um do you have collage collectives in stock Michelle um, you can, there's, there's, this is number one. And then there's uh, number two is separated in two volumes. Amber says it's such a scary idea, cannibalizing journals. It really is. I, I totally get it. And I'm not trying to turn you guys into me, but I can only teach you what I do. And this is one of the things I do. And one of the reasons I do this though, um, is because I am in a unique position that I, make a lot of the same pages over and over again. So as I teach classes and I go around teaching classes, so if I've taught a class for a year, then I will have, um, you know, tons of this, not this exact, um, what do you call it? Composite or not this exact format with the exact stamps, but I've taught this class maybe dozens and dozens of times. So you'll see kind of the same thing repeating as you page through journals. There it is again. Okay, so this is my getting down the story class where we talk about writing and we do all this fun stuff. Uh, I taught this class many, many times in many places. This was a, um, a fun class that we did. So, you know, you'll see this, you know, flower class over and over. You'll see the same things happening over and over. And so for me, after a while, it, it's just not as personal. Um, if I do have a page or something that I like or that is really personal to me, I, I tear it out and I, I have a pile of stuff I like, if that makes sense. So there's a, a pile of stuff that's like, oh yeah, okay, I kind of like that. And I'll have it, I'll have all that stuff in, in, a, in a separate pile. And, and then eventually I sell it. <laughs> that stuff gets sold or I... Yeah, so I, I am very rarely attached to the outcome of my journaling. For me, the journaling is process over product. And I, you know, I learn and grow and you change. And so I'm just not attached to anything. So here, I'm going to rip some pages out of this one. And I find it helpful to have just all kinds of stuff. Let's rip that out. I'm going to save those clips. <laughs> I love my little clips. So when you're not attached to the outcomes, it's quite easy. It's also quite easy to rip stuff off if, if you just don't care. Um, you know, if, if you do something you don't like, please rip it up because you can give it a new life. It's kind of like the ultimate recycling. And remember the principle that we've talked about that reduction saves everything. So one of the things that's in my collage drawers that I keep collage fodder in is lots of ripped up pieces, journals, pieces, you know, experiments that I tried. You know, you can't like everything you do. Um, but the thing is that she says that would have been a keeper for me. The thing is I have hundreds of those. Do you know what I mean? Like eventually I've got, I might keep one representative sample or I might not. I mean, I, again, I, I realize I'm weird and that not everyone's cuckoo like me, but Again, all uh, you know, if you don't want to be the be a cannibal to your personal work, be a cannibal to the Collage Collective. I promise it's dead easy. All right, there's still some blank pages in there, which I'll save to use another day. That is so ugly. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dina. Sometimes they turn out bad, and sometimes they don't. All right. So 
once I have a bunch of these cut out, and like I said, I'm swimming in these. I'm swimming in <laughs> um, class samples. I'm swimming in um, bits and bobs that I've torn up and used. I just, I've got tons, mountains of it. I am prolific. <laughs> so, you know, that helps. If you, if you make a lot um, of art, it's, you, you, you become less attached to it. Okay. All right, so there's a bunch of piles. Now, what's wonderful about this is it's, <laughs> it's color, sometimes even focal point, and it is um, elements that I now don't have to do again. And so in a sense, it's, it's a way to make more art quickly. It's also a way to get that ver uh, a very organic, eclectic look that I really love because you're taking pieces parts from all over um, your work or the collage collective and then you're combining them in different and new ways which you'll learn a lot about composition when you do this and you will uh, you know it, it's such a great artistic um, challenge um, I just I pulled out a couple of pieces other things that I've done that I've that are what I would say finished for now um, that I've used cannibal <laughs> cannibalized pieces in. So here's one different pieces I've cannibalized. Oh, here's another one. This was a focal point from a page ages ago. This was some gloss spray experiments. This is a ripped tag. You can see I sewed on that. This is a cannibalized um, various pieces actually. Um, that I cannibalized, and that's stuck to a piece of, um, what do you call it? Not media board, it's a uh, art panel, like canvas panel, because I thought I would put those in frames, because I like the way those looked. Um, yeah, Tessa says, not to mention how reducing how many journals you end up storing. Yeah, I mean, eventually you've got scabs and scads of them, and yeah, I mean, th this is a part of my artistic play and process, and the journaling is part of how I learn. So, you know, I probably wouldn't be taking canvases off my walls and cutting those up, though, you know, never say never. <laughs> but in general, I'm probably not going to do that. But journals are fair game for me, you know, they're, they're just fair game for me. All right, so I've got this stuff to work with. And then what I'm going to work on as far as building new work. Oh, here's another one. Sorry attention to FSO squirrel today. This is a tag that I did with creative pieces from my, uh, my other work. I love that tag. <laughs> That's going to end up in a journal. I'll, I'll, I'll put that in the journal at some point and then probably rip it up again in the future. Um, yeah, if you don't, if you're, if you're new at this, um, you, you might not have a lot to cannibalize, but you know, Collage Collective is great for cannibalizing. It really is. And I promise we'll make more. Okay, so I've got a small journal because I think um, little bits of torn up pieces work well in here. It's not a lot of, it's not a lot of um, real estate to cover, so it's not going to be too hard to use that as a foundation. I have a bunch of already done tacks. So after, remember... <sighs> So I'm getting ahead of myself here. After I work, you know that I mop up. Diane does that too. You know, never waste paint and ink and I'll blot things. And so I, I end up with lots and lots of bits and bobs. That one's already done. Um, ready to go. And they might be but ugly, okay? They might not, but it they're just part of my creative mise en place, right? Now, here's another odd thing that I thought about as I thought about how to talk about this cannibalism. I hardly ever start with a blank page. So, you know, usually I would, and this journal is fairly, this is my very last white journal that I own. I just ordered more, I just placed an order. Because, heaven forbid, I run out of white journals, I go through these like water. They're just so easy to work in. They're so quick to fill. And 
I just, I love them. I, I love paging through them. So usually I've got something on pages, right? So most of the time I'll come, I'll come to a, a, a mop up, a swipe, something begun, and then that's what I build on. And that's why the tags are helpful because the tags already have something there. So they've already got spilled paint, gloss spray, blot, spit, ish, yeah? Okay, so here, any questions up to this point? Let me see, how long have I, oh, that's um, that's not a question to me. Any questions before I keep going? All right, so now what I do is I choose just one of one of the tags <laughs> or the journal page or whatever I feel like. And then I, I shop this for interesting color. So this has a lot of green and blue. So this is sort of yellow. It's going to blend, right? and not really stand out. So I might audition that there and think, you know, that's getting swallowed, right? That's getting swallowed. So then I will put that one aside and then keep digging. Now that's not getting swallowed. I like that. You can glue these elements on. I would use, if you're gonna use my products, I would use my ultra thick glue. Oh, there's no staples in that stapler. I would use my ultra thick glue if you or you can use a glue stick or Tim's collage medium or whatever you want but I'm gonna staple today just out of quickness so that background which was just a spill or a mop-up now now has this little element on it okay so that's gonna give me a nice contrast and as I as I dig through my pieces that I'm that I'm that I just ripped up I'm looking for something that just stands out to me. And like, I like this little, <laughs> I like that. Oh, and I love that the phrase and part of the stamp stayed with it when I cut it off. I think that is gonna be perfect on there. And then I would leave that out. So all of you OCD people, um, you, you're probably going to want to stab me after the end of this because I, I, I wouldn't turn that off. I would leave it just like that. Um, and I, I not, if I refer to your OCD, I'm not trying to talk bad about it in any way. I'm just jealous. <laughs> um, you can't really change your stripes, right? So if you're OCD, I say embrace it. Doesn't stapling cause damage over time in your journals? I don't know. I just ripped them up, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Lillian asks, how do you work and choose colors? Do you use the same choices as your previous videos? Um, yes, uh, I just, I choose the starting color and then every color after that is either a background, either, is either gonna, for example, look at this. So for this one, it looks like I chose green and blue to start. So those are analogous, close to each other on the color wheel. They're gonna be, they're gonna play nice together. And then for a color pop, I put in blushing. Okay, Amber, I'm the opposite of OCD too. I'm a hot mess. Um, what's the difference between ultra thick and regular? Um, so Shannon, my regular gel, my original gel, is for thin paper like tissue and, and maybe dictionary paper. Anything heavier than that, you need to use my ultra thick. I call ultra thick like glue stick in a jar. So it's really thick and it'll hold on heavy things like cardstock tags. It'll, hold, it'll, it'll dry and hold on a button if you need it to, okay? All right, so let me see. Can you apply more light? Um, so I, I have really good lighting on the screen that I'm watching, so it might be your computer's um, light because I, anybody else having issues with light? Looks okay to me. The size of my really, really big tags are a size 10, okay? Is that a stamp you used on that? And if so, which one? Uh, yes, this is a stamp. Oop, that's not it. What was I just working on? Um, however, I will t I'll have to look up the stamp. I, I, I am terrible and I don't remember very many 
names of stamp sets. So you're, you're yeah, I'm not gonna be able to help you with that unless for some reason I have, um, I happen to know, but I'd have to go look it up on Ranger's website. I know that's terrible. It's really weird that I don't know the names of my stamp sets. I, I know that's strange, but I have a lot of them and I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so this is this, this yellow is giving me a pop kind of against the maroon. And then I love these textural elements. It was just coincidence that this stamped image is pretty much the same color as this background, right? So that's gonna blend in nice. And then I would probably say, all right, I'm done with that. Delicious. So then that one goes aside. All right, let's pick another one. And then I find myself doing this sometimes for a warm up. Um, I love the way this this here looks, this tag, or this tape with the black stenciling. So this was one of the tags I tore out of the journal. And, I like this pink. I actually remember where I made this page. I made this page in the UK, I believe. Heart from the heart. You have trouble mixing colors. So Paula, um, didn't I do a color? Did I do a color demo? I think I did. Did you watch that one? Maybe it didn't help. Um, the biggest key is if colors are near each other on the color wheel, they'll play nice when they mix. If colors are far apart on the color wheel, you can end up with mud. But colors that are far apart, oh my gosh, I'm out of staples. Colors that are far apart are gonna give you lots of cool contrast. Okay. Gotta open a new pack of staples. Yeah, go back to, go back and watch it. I, so, and that might help a little bit. Color is hard. That's why I wrote my first book about color and composition. It's the two things that I see people struggle with the very most in class is color and composition. And some people have an innate ability to use color and to compose. Um, and then the rest of us can learn. Thank you, Paul, Patricia. Patricia said the writing stamp is text and scribbles. Thank you for that. You guys that look that stuff up, I really appreciate it. Oh, and if I had the stamp set in front of me, the, the name is printed on the set, but um, that was torn out of the journal. So I don't know. I don't know what to know. All right, so another thing that I'll do is use tissue. I'll use uh, stamp sets, and, you know, some of my pre-stamped images and uh, Yes, and then chipboard shapes. So I took my chipboard shapes out. Isn't that perfect? Like that's perfect on that tag, you guys. Love it. This is one of the reasons that I don't pre-color my images that I've stamped. Because I don't necessarily know what I'm gonna put them on. And so when I, once I've decided what they're going on, I can, I can decide if I need to color it at all, which a lot of times I don't I feel like I really need to color it. Or here, the reason I'm coloring the, the flower cheddar is because the background is blue and blue and orange um, are opposite on the color wheel. And so I know that that's gonna give me a nice contrast. This is this is one of my favorite stamp sets. I mean, I, I mean, I like all of my stamp sets. I mean, I did design them all, but uh, I'll go through phases too. I spent hour, I, not an hour, but I spent quite a, t a time today finding this stamp set. Where, this one. <laughs> I was just in the mood to use this again. One of my favorites of all time. In fact, let me show you where the what the original is. I have one on my wall. So. When I made this stamp set, what I did is I made actual collages. So I have a bunch of cabinet cards that I bought um, years ago at an antiques store. 
and I just photocopied the images. I have a printer that's like a printer, scanner, or copier. So I photocopied them and print them out, and then I created these really simple little collages, and then I took photos of the collages, put them in the computer, turned them into stamps. So this is the original dude that this stamp is from. And they just make me happy. And I, this is one of the stamp sets that I did because I love kind of funky collaged bits. And I, I fell in love with the set. We think that this stamped image looks like Ben, Diane's son. <laughs> ben at Art from the Heart. But anyway, yeah, that's the original. That's the original collage that that came from. All right. Always Flowers, thank you, Caroline. The set is called Always Flowers. Next time I'll try to maybe think ahead, but you know, I grab stuff, I grab stuff on a whim, so. But look at that, perfect, easy. The background was already done because it was some experiment from another day. Cabinet cards, Jill, are, they're photographs um, that were taken in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And they, they called them cabinet cards because they would put them in the cabinet and display them. They're, they're a photograph, they're a vintage photograph, and they're, it's mounted to kind of like a stiff piece of cardboard. So I have a stack of those. I happened to, I happened in on a vintage, an antique store once, and the, uh, the, the guy for that booth had everything um, half off. And so I bought like, I think I spent $100 and I bought a massive stack of cabinet cards because they're just fun images to use. So a little bit of pink speckle. There's another one done. So let's say you're not a tag person. You all This whole process you could be doing on card fronts. So wouldn't it be, this would be a lovely card. So then that, it, that with a sentiment, you, you've done a card. You've got a card to send to your mother-in-law. Um, Michelle, our spotlight store today is Everything Scrapbook and Stamps. It is a fantastic shop in Lake Worth, Florida. Michelle McCosh is the owner. And please, please love and support them. They're amazing. Okay, so let's do another. Let's go to a journal page. Since this is sort of dry. You like calling it speckles instead of the pox? I like giving everything the pox. The pox kind of makes me happy, I don't know why. All right, I'm gonna take part of this cut out. <laughs> and I'm gonna leave it in an arch. Yeah, boy. So Susan asks, I use stamps to make cards. Do I need stamp maker's permission? So there is, um, there's something called an angel policy. If you'll just Google, oop, I just stapled two pages together. Though. If you'll just Google Ranger angel policy, Dina, um, it'll come up and then you'll see the policy. But basically, yes, you can use the stamps. I think you just have to um, put something on the back. Like, I don't know. There's some sort of copyright thing you have to add. You could just print it out on a label. Everything scrapbook and stamps. Yep, Michelle absolutely ships. Absolutely. So um, who said she scored cabinet cards? Maggie says she scored cabinet cards. It's secure enough for me. Robbie says it's stapling secure enough. It is for me. I mean, it's just a journal. It's not... That's fine. Um, thank you, Kelly, for the angel policy. Thank you, thank you. Um, there was there was another question that went out of my poor little pea brain. Oh, so Maggie, your cabinet cards. You can use the original, but then you've used your original. So what I like to do is, um, is instead of using the original, I like to photocopy it or take a photo of the cabinet card and then print it out that makes sense. Um, I will say it's not okay to like download images off the internet and print them out and use them as stamps. It takes money out of our pockets. It's kind of not cool, but all right. So also, let's see. So I like that little archway. So now I've got a little frame happening. I think maybe we need a 
piece an octopus chipboard in there, don't you think? Sure. Will you coming at, be coming out with more stamps before summer? So my summer release stamps are designed. Um, the the release won't happen till um, late summer because the stencils have to come from Taiwan and we like to release them together. So everything is approved and ordered and we just have to wait for the shipping and stuff like that to happen, if that makes sense. But so that'll be later in the summer. But they're ready. I've actually already done, if you know, January. <laughs> Did them all, handed them in. Oh, I keep grabbing the wrong stapler. So a little chipboard. Again, you don't have to staple if you don't want to. You can absolutely glue with your favorite glue. The reason I am stapling is it's a dry connection, which is easier for me to move quickly. And to be fair, if I were doing this on my own at home without you guys watching, I would likely be stapling it as well. Y'all know I like my uh, stapler. So. so now I'm cutting text circles out from this piece. That was something from another day. And I think that's kind of fun. So accents, like if you're gonna stencil, instead of stenciling on this, what you could do is find some stenciling that you've already done on something else that you've cut up. And you know, why not just stencil on it? Because it looks different all layered in. Um, it gives you a more visually um, sophisticated, I guess is a way to say it. Visually dense is a better way to say it, not sophisticated. A visually dense layering process. Because here on this little piece, I've got stenciling there, a swipe of pink, the pox, a swipe of yellow, something bit, something uh, black, and a little peak of words. And that's gonna give you um, a layering interest that takes a lot of work, you know, if you're doing it from start to finish. Because um, I'm just, I'm just really, really not a fan of, of sit, of doing um, a page start to finish in a sitting. Um, I, to me, that feels like a chore, and it doesn't feel fun. And so, the only, the only time I do that is in a class situation, and. <laughs> if I have something due. <laughs> but even if I have something due, for the most part, I would probably just start with creative bits like this. It, it really makes uh, cre uh, your creating go quick more quickly. And again, you'll learn a lot about color and composition. The nice thing too, like let's say I'm doing this and I think, okay, I wanna add a funky color to this. And then I go to add a funky color by collaging it in and it doesn't work. Well, then I can just not, not stick it down. Whereas if I painted that on, then I would now have to baby wipe it off. I, this is really appealing to me today, the bottoms of these bodies. I don't even wanna use the women as a whole. That, like that, they look like ornaments, don't they? Oh, let's do that. So this is kind of just a creative, exercise that ends up in a result that I really, oh, happy clap, an exercise that I really like. Michelle, do you have chip? Do you have chipboard shapes? I kind of dig that too. Okay, I follow a lot of ocean Instagram um, accounts and they posted one today of a tiny, 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 tiny little octopus. And I was like, oh my gosh, so cute. I, in Palau, I saw an octopus about this, the top, the size of uh, my, my thumb from my end of my thumb to my first joint. Itty, itty, itty bitty octopus. And the dive master and I saw it and we were both like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And before he could get out his magnifying glass, it had scooted along the rock and got into a tiny little hole. And so only me and him got to see it. It was so cool. I mean, look how quickly these are coming together. So I, 
I do this process for quite a while. Now, what what is maybe this missing? To me, it's missing words and something personal. Um, even, I mean, I guess it's personal in the sense that it is my art, but I write all in a go. So often I'll take a journal and I'll just be in the mood. I just, sometimes I'm just in the mood to like blather. And when I'm in a blathering mood, I will come back with pens or tissue or quotes or anything that I feel like. And that is generally when I write. And then, you know, you can decide, do, do these need more? In Dina Land, I, I, I would say no, because <laughs> I'm easily um, satisfied. But those are perfect to me. Nice. And then the, the other advantage to this sort of thing is if you're gluing, you just got to wait for your glue to dry. You're not waiting for paint layers to dry or anything like that. I like that too. I think that needs to happen. I could, I could fill copious journals like this, you guys. Copious. Copious. Oh, let's use these. Collage tissue. You're gonna die, but, so I was trying to find some collage tissue to use, well, which I have lots. I've got it coming out of the wazoo. And um, I went to look in my little area that I supposedly keep collage tissue in, and I have b literally balled up tissue. <laughs> Let me show you. This is what was in my cubby hole. Literally balled up tissue. <laughs> so at some point I must have picked all of this stuff off, off the floor, balled it up into a, a bunch of nonsense, and then just stuffed it in the cubby. Like why did, <laughs> why did I do that? I don't know. Anyway, I'm putting a back balled in so it's fine. It's been that way for a while, it'll be, it'll survive. So the, the, these are in the set that has the balls on the front, the circles. One of this one. The church windows are in this set. This one's still available. The very first set that has the hearts on the front is not available, and the faces are still available as well. And working on other ideas as well. This is, I taught this class long before I joined Ranger. It's not even a completed sample. Um, it has a little spinner in it. And cool, fun, and look, pop up like we did in the page in motion class. That looks familiar. And I didn't even finish because it would have, would have been a class sample from back in the day. When I dug through those boxes the other day, I think I found, I don't know, five of these not finished. And I was like, oh, hey. I love those colors. They're perfect, right? And that is going to be a perfect little accent there, don't you think? Sure. So I guess you just have to make the first choice. So when you're doing something like this, the first choice informs everything. So by the way, next week I have a, a demo scheduled called What Comes First. Really, that was a silly way to, to name that, but um, that's basically gonna be my philosophies on layering, okay? So that, which comes first, <laughs> the name of that demo one of the days next week, I think it's on Tuesday, Ooh, that will not reach, um, is, is, a, is a demo on layering. Okay, so I, I choose a foundation, so either a tag, a journal page, and then I choose the first element to add, and then everything after that is going to accent that element, and, and then I add, make sure I have a focal point, and then I call it done. Okay, um, a couple of reminders. You can still join Page in Motion class on Facebook. The video is there. You can still, uh, May 9th is another class that I'm doing. 
called The Accordion Spined Book. It's a little book construction that I used to teach all the time before Ranger and I haven't taught in ages, so I thought it'd be fun to do that. Just using your regular stuff, we'll make a cool little book. You can, it's $15. If you can't, if you can't watch the live, you can always buy the class and watch it after the fact, right? And cool. All right, so this was some weird print that I was blotting off with gloss spray. I quite like that on there. Perfect. All right, so this is the process. Don't you think it's, are you overwhelmed? Are you gonna try it? What, what you thinking? What you thinking, my friends? I have so many to cut up though. There's another, another good reason to uh, make a lot of art. Don't be attached. I'm not attached to any of it. Um, I make it and then I'm like, yeah, I'm good. That was cool. Let's do something else. Looking for my black ink pad. Ooh. That was stuck to my ink pad, look at that. It even has a staple in it, so I must have ripped it off something at some point. Barbara, you get overwhelmed easily. One step at a time though, Barbara. One step. So that's why I try to break it down. Like step one, choose a foundation, a tag, a journal page, a card front. Step two, shop through here, maybe I'll write this down. <laughs> Can you tell the technical writer in me is coming out? All right, number one, you're going to rip up stuff. Number two, you're going to choose, excuse me, a foundation. What I mean by that is are you making a page, a card, a tag? canvas, basically your substrate, okay? And there can be something already on the substrate or not. Most of the time though, with me, there's something already on it because I've got just piles and piles of mop-up tags and all this kind of stuff, okay? Number three, shop your rip-ups, <laughs> your rip-ups, for something that interests you, okay? So you're looking for pattern, texture, okay? Add it to the substrate. And then you can repeat number three and four as many times as you want. And then add a focal point. Remember, focal points can be stamps, collage, uh, chipboard. Oop, I do know how to spell. Right? Uh, tissue. Okay, so this is the general process. And I'll, I'll just say it one more time. Rip up stuff, choose a foundation, page, card, tag, canvas. Shop your rip ups for something interesting. So don't look at the thing as a whole. You can't be like, oh, I love that whole one. If you love the whole one, then this is not one you're cutting up. <laughs> okay? Put that in a separate pile. Shop your rip-ups for something interesting. Add it to the substrate. Okay? Add the interesting bit. So like if I'm shopping this, I'm thinking, huh, I dig that I put threads back there. That's kind of interesting. I like the way this... Is happening okay and then may I I'm gonna add make a quick decision <laughs> make a quick decision don't agonize all right I like that I like the little bit of dark left on there too <laughs> cool then, oh, I, I, I missed step one. We gotta choose something. Should we staple it on that? Yes. Add it to the substrate. Now repeat 
Number three and number four. Re continue shopping your rip-ups. That's a very technical term there. Until, you know, you're, you like what you've added. If you don't know what else to add, what's my rule? If you don't know what else to add, you are done. Now I'm getting bossy, y'all. Now I'm getting bossy. The background's really overwhelming. It's deliciously awful. La, 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 la. I'm thinking about more bread. <laughs> oh. It's just so much easier than doing all the work from scratch. I mean, if you've written on a journal page, like something for posterity, don't, don't rip that up. But if it's art where you're practicing and learning and that you're not, you know, number one, don't be attached to it. Number two, I want that off. Uh, number two, make lots so you won't care. All right, so I tore that off. I think that was competing. I think it's too much, but I really like just that bit. I think that's ace. Let's find the old journal. Oop, not glue is not dry. La 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 la. Just gonna put that there. I think we need a field trip to studio to shop her stuff. Seriously. You know what I'm gonna do though, soon? I'm going to. I have a, I had a bunch of um, bags made. So I had a bunch of these printed. It's a it's a vinyl clear bag, and they say tell your story on them. If you came to my Sedona class, you got one of these. And how big are they? They are um, nine by eleven, looks like. And I'm going to fill them up with stuff, and then I'm going to offer them for cheap. And I'll send them to you if you want one. So, if you're coming to dive into art, a lot of people canceled because of the virus, which I completely understand and respect. But if you are still coming to dive into art, I'm going to be mailing you a kit <laughs> with everything I need you to bring. And that'll be in one of these as well. But anyway, I have a hundred of these. <laughs> so... I thought that'd be kind of fun and I don't want to make it make them super expensive because it's just random crap that I've torn up right so it's not going to be crazy expensive that's on my list to do it's on my list to do <sighs> okay so stapled that down look there it, it's it's a finished page I can leave that abstract or I can say okay what what's what step am I at I shopped my rip-ups I added it to the substrate I added a bunch of things oh that accidentally flopped there what do we think about that? Sure. And now I, uh, I repeat that until I'm like, okay, cool. And then I need to add a focal point. Now, the question is, is that a strong enough focal point? That heart? I think it is. <laughs> but remember, I have low standards. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been editing my new class. I know it's taking me forever to get it done. I'm so sorry. It's going to be a traditional online, not, not a Facebook online class. And I can hear myself snorting as I'm breathing, as I'm, as I'm uh, editing it. And it's seriously, me and I'm not editing out the snorts. I'm just leaving. And I don't mean when I do it on purpose, like when I laugh and go, you know, does that make sense? Um, but just breathing. I'm snorting. And I'm like, no wonder I have sleep apnea. Seriously. I, when I breathe, I'm snorting. Oh, if, if you end up taking that class, um, it, it's totally, you're totally going to hear me snort through, as I'm breathing through the whole thing. I'm like, holy cow, I'm like a little pig. Um, Eileen asks, asks, how do we order your bag with stuff? Um, when I get my rear and gear, I will post them on Art of Dina Wakely page and on Instagram. 
and so it'll be kind of first come first served if you can you can if you tell me to send you an invoice now ginger i'll never remember okay <laughs> i'll never remember um also, Adana, yeah, I'll bring you into Oklahoma. My heart's fancy. We need to get we need to get her on the spotlight list. I need to email Mora. Paula asks, can you show us the sample again from your first page in motion class? I could if I could find it. I'm actually not sure what journal it's in right this second. Um, if you saw my room, you would think a hoarder lives here. All right, so done, easy, quick, satisfying. It's recycling. It's just, I just love it. Any qu other questions about this process? Of cannibalizing. I encourage you guys to do it. To cannibalize. I really do. And you'll just make cool things. It's just easy. Especially, it's a great way to be creative when you're not in the mood to actually you know get paint out or you know what I mean it's a needs a word yeah we could put a word on it um it's another good thing if, if you're going on vacation you could totally bring a bag full of you know ripped up bits a stapler <laughs> and piles of tags and then Gosh, you, you could even staple ephemera from your vacation onto your tags and stuff like that. Wouldn't that be cool? It's going to be cool. I don't love these words, though, for this. Let's see. I want a big, bold word. How about this one? Perfect. Already stamped. Done is better than perfect. Da, 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 da. like it being in a flag shape but I like that perfect Love. maybe it needs a flower too <laughs> now I can't stop no I think it's I don't think it that flowers no that's a no too much there's too much going on in that background to put that flower there does it need splatter girl? And then I'm covering it all up. Ooh, she'd be cool looking through the heart though. Man, nah, another day. <sighs> la, 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 la. I like it. I think I'm good. I'm gonna be sitting here doing this all day. <laughs> Oy. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Last time for questions and last little chance. And I will let you get on with your day. What does speaker truth have to do with the work? It doesn't. It's just a phrase I like. My words hardly ever match the work. I don't worry about matching words. I don't, I, I just... And plus, I, speak your truth, I think, goes with everything. I think it does, anyway. No, I think it's too much. I like it just the way it is. Just the way it is. All right. Did I miss questions? I'll scroll back just a bit. Can you please have direct credit card payment without PayPal? So you can check out as a guest and then you don't have to have a PayPal account. Check, just do guest checkout. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people overthink. That's fine. Um, Kathleen says, add words. You seem to be very random, but I always want some meaning and connection. So that's fine. I mean, that's a philosophy. I don't always have meaning though, Kathleen. I don't always have connection. I have the process. So for me, the act of moving my hands, combining color, making, you know, is so fun. And that that's really fulfilling to me. Um, so I, I really don't worry about there being a ton of connection. It's just not. And then the connection for me comes later when I write text on pages. So that that will add connection as well. But you know, that's 
you know, it just depends on why you personally journal. And if you're personally journaling for connections, then that's great. I, I don't have a problem with that. I think that's amazing. Um, I just don't, I just, you know, I've journaled for so long. I don't have, I've journaled out a lot of my issues already. Or not issues, I'm not saying are issues or connections. I, I'm in it for the fun of it, if that makes sense. Can you put the process in the center of the screen? You bet, Betty. If one of your gloss sprays did not have a ball, can I just stick a metal one in? Yep, you can even stick a pebble in there. But yeah, you can stick a little metal ball or a bead or a pebble, or you can definitely email Ranger and they'll mail you one. They'll happily mail you one. Um, yeah. What is this journal called? The white journal, yeah. Will you have more crayons? Do you mean scribble sticks? Um, once we get more colors, because the sets come in 12s. So, can this video be viewed again later? Yes, it sure can. So, it, I put these videos on my YouTube channel, I put them on my blog, and then also, if you go to my Art of Gina Wakely Facebook page and click on the Videos tab, on the Videos tab, under the Videos tab, you'll see every demo. Um, there, were, there were small squovals, squovals, Diane, they were in a three fur. They were in a three set mashup, and that is a, a long retired set. So here they are. Actually, maybe it's not retired. I don't know. But th this center bit here of this stencil is small squovals right here, and then rectangles, and then like hexagons. So um, I don't know if Michelle has this or not. And I, I. Mm. I can't, I can't remember if this particular one is retired. It might be, I don't know, you'll just have to check. If Ray, if Michelle doesn't have it, check the other shops. Um, yeah, so can gesso be added on a handmade paper before journaling? Absolutely, I gesso almost everything. Store info, thank you, Michelle. Yes, everythingmixmedia.com and support, support. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's retired or not, Diane. Do you think it is retired, Yvonne? It might be. A lot of the three furs like this were really popular. And so the more popular they are, the quicker they get retired. <laughs> because they sell it through their quantity and they don't resell. Um, yeah, so go on a hunt. I wish, I don't know what it's called. Um, <laughs> sorry. Again, I'm pretty pathetic about that kind of thing. Have an awesome day, eat some carbs, and we will see you if you're if you're coming. Ooh, funky masks, that is a fun one. Uh, if you're coming on Saturday, we'll see you at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday. And then the next demo will be on Tuesday. Okay. Shape mashup, Caroline, is that what it's called? Shape mashup. Did you find it on Ranger's website? Um, why are your stencils the size they are? Um, be, do you not like the size? Uh, I don't ever use a bigger portion. It's kind of like how Tim says he makes the stencils that are a tag size because you hardly ever stencil over an entire thing. So that's that's very typical for me. Um, it, you know, I might have this entire stencil. Very rarely do I use it in its six by whole six by nine footprint. Okay. I will use pieces and then I move it around. Um, so, you know, I'm n I never take this, very rarely anyway, take this and like do it as a whole, except for maybe gel printing. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't use them um, as, as holes. Thank you, Caroline. So that, that stencil is not retired. Shape mashup. There was another question that I missed. Oh, Saturday is a live Facebook class. It's $15. You go to dinawakely.com, click on online classes, and you can buy that class. We're going to make a, an accordion spine book, and we're going to decorate all the pages in it. Um, have you alive using the mixed media journal with the black cover? I'm trying to think. I, I mean, I use it all the time. I don't know if I have a, a live specific to that, but if you watch them, you'll see me using them here and there. I still use them all. Okay. Bye, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Thursday. Talk to you soon.